Good evening. We welcome you as we celebrate the solemnity of the 13th Sunday in Ordinary Time. As we are in God's house, we encourage parishioners to continue to wear a mask to protect those who have not been vaccinated or cannot be vaccinated. We want everyone who comes here to pray to feel as if they have a safe environment. The QR code is available in the pews and at the back of the chairs, allowing you to have the liturgy of the word and the music for the weekend masses to participate more actively in the Holy Mass. Please scan the QR code with your smartphone or camera. Please do not forget to silence your phone while using this facility. Our cel celebrant for today's Mass is Father Reed. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. Thank you. Thank you for the opportunity and the privilege uh, to be able to join you for liturgy each week. Uh, as once again, we take part in the most important prayer that we can offer together, our great prayer of the Mass. Uh, the Eucharist is truly a family prayer. It is truly a prayer of thanksgiving. And so coming together as members of God's family here on this earth, uh, first to meet the Lord in the uh, scriptures before meeting him in the breaking of bread at our altar, we seek first, as always, to be healed and to be forgiven. As always, not only before the Lord, but before one another, uh, Acknowledging our sinfulness together, we at the same time express our sorrow 
and resolve to begin anew. You raise the dead to life in the spirit. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You bring pardon and peace to the sinner. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You bring light to those in darkness. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, uh, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. now pray. In coming together this afternoon, O God, who through the grace of adoption chose us to be sons and daughters of light, grant we pray that we may not be wrapped in the darkness of error, but always be seen to stand in the bright life of light of truth. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. In preparation for our Liturgy of the Word this afternoon, uh, our auto tells us that because of sin, sickness, and, <clears throat> excuse me, because of sin, sickness, and death have entered the world but are overcome through the resurrection of Jesus, uh, who, who hears uh, the cry of those in need, healing the sick and raising the dead to life. A reading from the Book of Wisdom. God did not make death, nor does he rejoice in the destruction of the living. For he fashioned all things that they might have being, and the creatures of the world are wholesome, 
and there is not a destructive drug among them, nor any domain of the netherworld on earth, for justice is undying. For God formed man to be imperishable, the image of his own nature he made him. But by the envy of the devil, death entered the world, and those who belong to his company experience it. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. From the second letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, as you excel in every respect, in faith, discourse, knowledge, all earnestness, and in the love we have for you, may you excel in this gracious act also. For you know the gracious act of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, for your sake he became poor so that by his poverty you might become rich. Not that others should have relief while you are burdened, but that as a matter of equality, your abundance at the present time should supply their needs, so that their abundance may also supply your needs, that, it may there, that there may be equality. For as it is written, whoever had much did not have more, and whoever had little did not have less. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. <clears throat> A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. When Jesus had crossed again in the boat to the other side, a large crowd gathered around him, and he stayed close to the sea. One of the synagogue officials, named Jairus, came forward. Seeing him, he fell at his feet and pleaded earnestly with him, saying, My daughter is at the point of death. Please come, lay your hands on her that she may get well and live. He went off with them, and a large crowd followed him and pressed upon him. There was a woman afflicted with hemorrhages for 12 years. She had suffered greatly at the hands of many doctors and had spent all that she had. Yet she was not helped, but only grew worse. She had heard about Jesus and came up behind him in the crowd and touched his cloak. She said, if I but touch his clothes, I shall be cured. Immediately, her flow of blood dried up. She felt in her body that she was healed of her affliction. Jesus, aware at once that power had gone out from him, turned around in the crowd and asked, Who has touched my clothes? But his disciples said to Jesus, You see how the crowd is pressing upon you, and yet you ask, Who touched me? And he looked around to see who had done it. The woman, realizing what had happened to her, approached in fear and trembling. She fell down before Jesus and told him the whole truth. He said to her, Daughter, your faith has saved you. Go in peace and be cured of your affliction. While he was still speaking, people from the synagogue official's house arrived and said, Your daughter has died. Why trouble the teacher any longer? Disregarding the message that was reported, Jesus said to the synagogue official, do not be afraid, just have faith. He did not allow anyone to accompany him inside except Peter, James, and John, the brother of James. When they arrived at the house of the synagogue official, he caught sight of a commotion, people weeping and wailing loudly. So he went in and said to them, why this commotion and weeping? The child is not dead, but asleep. And they ridiculed him. Then he put them all out. He took along the child's father and mother and those who were with him and entered the room where the child was. He took the child by the hand and said to her, Talitha kum, which means, little girl, I say to you, arise. The girl, a child of twelve arose immediately and walked around. At that, they were utterly astounded. He gave strict orders that no one should know this and said that she should be giving something to eat. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. My friends, uh, this afternoon's gospel passage of St. Mark has two stories, does it not? The scripture commentary tells us about these two accounts of healing, and this is what is said. Now, these two stories, while they are different in many respects, there is one constant, one common element, faith. It's that word again, 
It seems to always come down to that, faith. That mysterious word we throw around that is so hard to define, so hard to understand, so hard to grasp. Faith. The woman with the hemorrhage had it, and it compelled her to not let Jesus pass her by. Jairus, the synagogue official, had it too, and it compelled him to come forward and ask Jesus to help his deathly ill daughter. Now, in the first case, the person with faith received the healing. That is, the woman with the hemorrhage. Remember the words spoken to her? Daughter, your faith has saved you. In the second case, a person was healed because of someone else's faith. Interestingly, Jairus, the official synagogue official, and Jesus said to him, do not be afraid, just have faith. And the two stories even differ in how the miracle comes about. In the first story, the sick woman touches Jesus, and in the second story, Jesus touches the sick girl. As we well know, faith is the constant in both cases. Faith provides the doorway to all things God wants for us. Faith is a kind of foundation upon which the blessings of Jesus are built. Now we, told, we are told and we know that God gives us with faith, a faith that allows us to always know who to turn to a faith that allows us to accept that we are not God and that we should never act as if we are. Faith that allows us to continue to trust even when we have suffered through the actions of others. Faith that allows us to continue to hope even when we don't get exactly what we pray for. Faith that allows us to continue to believe in a loving God despite our struggles and our sorrows and our disappointments. What better words to conclude in the closing section of that commentary? Faith is what helps us to embrace the profound truth that ultimately nothing can hurt us if we stay close to God. Ultimately, our faith will sustain us, will see us through, and will save us. I wish those were my words, not the words of the commentator, but the commentator said it says it much better than I could. Please join me. Again, we make our profound expression, a profession of faith before God and before one another. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begot not made consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, 
the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray. Trusting in the love of our merciful Father, let us bring our prayers and petitions before him in deep faith. Our response is, Lord, hear our prayer. For the church on earth, may the Lord increase us in faith and number, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For leaders of nations whose people live in fear amidst violence and poverty, May the Holy Spirit breathe the fire of repentance and humility into their hearts. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those who suffer injustice, especially the victims of abuse and violence, may God grant them justice and healing. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those among us who are considering initiation into the Catholic Church, may God bless them with a fervor and an increasing desire for the fullness of communion with him. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our policemen, first responders, and those serving in the military, may God watch over them as they carry out their duties and return them safely to their families. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the protection of all human life, the unborn, the starving, the homeless, and the little children who live in dangerous places, and respect toward all races, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died, especially Ernesto Bellet, Gerardo Apollin- Apollinar, may the Lord who came to give them life welcome them into their heavenly home. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for Lucas Esposito and family living, for whom this Mass is offered, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for all the prayers you you hold in your heart, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And as always, for a special remembrance of our deceased during this past week, uh, a week once again in which we saw, we, we witnessed so much violence and tragedy, uh, victims of natural disasters and calamities, um, the lives lost in the state of Alabama as a result of Tropical Storm Claudette, uh, the 14 lives lost, nine of them children. The horrific condo collapse in Southern Florida which took the lives of four people and so many people missing in hopes that they are still alive. For the balloon disaster in the air in New Mexico, taking the lives of four people. For victims of violence, uh, the airstrike uh, in the market in Ethiopia, which took the lives of 51 people and the tragic assassination of a driver in a car recently. For the deceased members of our own particular families whom we remember quietly at this time. For all of our deceased parishioners and benefactors here at St. Ignatius. For the souls in purgatory especially those who have no one to pray for them. And may we conclude, as always, with a few quiet moments, uh, giving us the opportunity to ask the Lord to be close to our own personal intentions and needs. Almighty and eternal God, hear our prayers, and in your abundant mercy and love, grant what we need according to your holy will, 
through Christ our Lord. Amen. Having met the Lord in word, we now prepare to meet him shortly in sacrament. Please join in the singing of I Heard the Voice of Jesus, which can be found, I guess, on your phone. <laughs> sacrifice in yours. Again, our usual offerings of bread and wine, your generosity in our collection this afternoon, and last but not least, our own presence here together in prayer, praise, and worship. Let us pray that our entire sacrifice may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. The sacrifice of your hands for the praise and glory of his name. O God, who graciously accomplish the effects of your mysteries, grant, we pray, that the deeds by which we serve you may be worthy of these sacred gifts this afternoon. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. With your spirit. Let us lift up our hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right to give you thanks, truly just to give you glory, Father most holy. For you are the one God, living and true, existing before all ages and abiding for all eternity, dwelling in unapproachable light. Yet you, who alone are good, the source of life, have made all that is, so that you might fill your creatures with blessings and bring joy to all of us by the glory of your light. And so in your presence are countless hosts of angels who serve you day and night, and gazing upon the glory of your face, glorify you without ceasing. With them, we too confess your name in exaltation, giving voice to every creature under heaven, as we acclaim.
we pray our fourth Eucharistic prayer. We give you praise, Father Most Holy, for you are great, and you have fashioned all your works in wisdom and in love. You form man in your own image and entrusted the whole world to his care, so that in serving you alone, the Creator, he might have dominion over all creatures. And when through disobedience he had lost your friendship, you did not abandon him to the domain of death, for you came in mercy to the aid of all, so that those who seek might find you. Time and again, you offered us covenants and through the prophets taught us to look forward to salvation. And you so loved the world, Father Most Holy, that in the fullness of time, you sent your only begotten Son to be our Savior. Made incarnate by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary, he shared our human nature in all things but sin. To the poor he proclaimed the good news of salvation to prisoners freedom, and to the sorrowful of heart joy. To accomplish your plan, he gave himself up to death, and rising from the dead, he destroyed death and restored life. And that we might live no longer for ourselves, but for him who died and rose again for us, he spent the Holy Spirit from you, Father, as the first fruits for those who believe so that bringing to perfection his work in the world, he might sanctify creation to the full. Therefore, O Lord, we pray, may this same Holy Spirit graciously sanctify these offerings, that they may become the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, for the celebration of this great mystery, which he himself left us, as an eternal covenant. For when the hour had come for him to be glorified by you, Father Most Holy, having loved his own who in the world, he loved them to the end. And while they were at supper, he took bread, blessed and broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, taking the chalice filled with the fruit of the vine, he gave thanks and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Together, as our crucifix always reminds us. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death. Therefore, O Lord, as we now celebrate the memorial of our redemption, we remember Christ's death and his descent to the realm of the dead. We proclaim his resurrection and his ascension to your right hand. And as we await his coming in glory, we offer you his body and blood, the sacrifice acceptable to you, which brings salvation to the whole world. Look, O Lord, upon the sacrifice which you yourself have provided for your church and grant in your loving kindness to all who partake of this one bread and one chalice 
but gathered into one body by the Holy Spirit, we may truly become a living sacrifice in Christ to the praise of your glory. Remember, Lord, therefore, all those whom we offer this sacrifice, especially your servant, Francis, our Pope, John, our Bishop, and the whole order of bishops, or the clergy, the religious, and those who take part in this offering, those gathered here before you this afternoon, your entire people, and all who seek you with a sincere heart. Remember also those who have died in the peace of your Christ, and all the dead whose faith you alone have known. To all of us, your sons and daughters, grant, O merciful Father, that we may enter into a heavenly inheritance with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with St. Joseph, her spouse, with your apostles and saints in your kingdom, there with the whole of creation, freed from the corruption of sin and death, may we glorify you through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. As we begin our communion rite, having already been fed with his word and preparing to be nourished with his food, at the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, Our Father who, art who art in heaven, heaven hallowed be thy name. name. Thy, thy kingdom, kingdom come, come. Thy, thy will be done, done on earth as, as it is in heaven. heaven. Give us, give us this day, day our daily, our daily bread, bread, and forgive, and forgive us, us our trespasses, trespasses as we, we forgive, forgive those who trespass, who trespass against us. And lead us, lead us not into temptation, but deliver, but deliver us, from, us evil. from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, For the kingdom the power, and the, and the glory are yours, are yours now, and, now forever. and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. And may the peace of the Lord be always with you. And with you, our spirit. Thank you. Let us take a moment to acknowledge each other.
ever grateful for our spiritual food at this time. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are we called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be. For those of you who are joining us via live stream, let us now pray the spiritual communion prayer. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Our communion hymn is We Remember.
May this divine sacrifice, which we have offered and received, we pray, O Lord, fill us with life, so that bound to you in lasting charity, we may bear fruit that lasts forever. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. With your spirit. May Almighty God bless us. Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us go in peace. Thanks be to God. Thank you again for your uh, presence this afternoon, your participation, your attentiveness, and a time as always to thank uh, our organist, uh, our lector, our Eucharistic ministers, our altar server, and our ushers. Thank you. Pam, the announcements? Pam? Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Throughout the month of June, our priests will remember fathers and also pray for fathers whose names are listed in the Father's Day Novena. Our 2022 Mass book is open for Mass intentions for your loved ones. Please check the bulletin for more details. Join us every Friday at 3 p.m. for praying the Divine Mercy Chaplet. On July 3rd, the Patriotic Rosary will resume at 8 a.m. All parishioners are invited to attend. Let us sing patriotic songs and continue to pray that we will all live together in peace and harmony and bring an end to the violence and hatred here and abroad. After the 5 p.m. Mass on Saturday, July 3rd, there will be an hour of adoration and confession from 6 to 6.30 p.m. The Religious Education Office will be closed for the summer beginning on July 1st. Registration for the 20, 2021 and 2022 year can be found online at the parish website. We are in need of catechists for levels two, four, and six. If anyone would be interested in teaching, please call Colleen at the Religious Education Office. The bread and wine, candles and flowers are offered this week for all the fa fathers in heaven. Thank you. Our recessional hymn, is O oh God our help in ages past.
Love.